Hi witches! Today we are delving right into one of my favorite topics to talk about and that is the holidays on the wheel of the year. Well, the holiday that we're talking about today of course is Ostara which is the celebration of the spring equinox or the first day of spring and the spring equinox or the vernal equinox as you might have heard it called as well. In 2023 that is occurring on Monday March 20th so about a week from today. Oh my gosh so exciting! Um, now if you're in the southern hemisphere you might alternatively be celebrating the autumnal equinox um, and that is celebrating fall as the earth begins to cool. Now the Wheel of the Year is a series of eight modern holidays that were popularized by Gerald Gardner the inventor of Wicca. Um, Though they often draw on pagan folk practices to celebrate the earth at its various points throughout the year um, and thus many pagans such as myself still celebrate these holidays. I was introduced to the Wheel of the Year as a Wiccan but I love love the way um, you can still celebrate the earth on these holidays in a really non-denominational way as well so that's what we're going to talk about today. Ostara is a festival that celebrates balance, rebirth, and the arrival of spring and there are dozens of spring festivals from all around the world so I really encourage you guys to research your ancestral practices if that is something that interests you um, for further inspiration because you might find that you connect better with a different holiday and that is a-okay. Many Wiccans and Pagans um, believe that there was an ancient festival um, held around this time of year honoring the goddess Aostra. However, there isn't a lot of primary sources going back to that um, beyond the claims of Jacob Grimm in the 1800s. Um, there is another medieval monk who briefly mentions Aostra, but Aostra was likely a regional goddess or spirit. And though we can honor her, it's always really important to me to remind people that Easter itself, like the holiday itself and what it celebrates, is not a stolen holiday. Um, so Christians did not steal that from pagans, though many of our ancestors' practices were syncretized into Christianity as all of that was kind of happening. So I kind of prefer to see it as like a survival of our ancestral practices, our pagan practices um, within Christianity and kind of a sign of resiliency of our ancestors and their beliefs. So um, that's kind of where I fall on the discourse of Aostra and Ostara. Um, this comes up a lot during Yule as well, but I just wanted to um, point that out. So anyways, now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's get down to the brass tacks of this holiday. First things first, let's talk about spiritual intentions. And the spiritual intentions surrounding Ostara include rebirth, balance, renewal, life, nature, purification, intention setting, growth, and motivation. So as we are celebrating the newness of spring and the warmer days ahead, which I'm so thankful for, um, you can kind of see this reflects in a lot of the intentions and the energies surrounding this holiday. So if you are like, hey, you know, spring reminds me of joy, focus on joy or harmony or, you know, things like that. It doesn't have to be just anything I listed. Feel free to use your intentions as well. Colors you might want to use in your wardrobe to decorate your sacred space, maybe even your altar, um, would include pastels. So very similar to Invulc, if you guys want to check out that video from a couple weeks ago. Um, but I would include uh, colors such as light greens, pinks, yellows, blues, light purples. Again, anything really pastel and spring is what we should be using to decorate our altars and our sacred spaces. I encourage you as well to be inspired by nature around you. So just because I'm seeing um, some of these lighter colors does not mean that that is the reality for you and your environment. So I encourage you to be inspired by that as well. We are all living in different beautiful places on this planet and I think it's awesome to see how that informs other people's practices, right? Um, symbols that are associated with Ostara include eggs, which we see again at Easter a lot for sure, um, but are um, representative of like birth, rebirth, fertility, all of that good stuff, right? Which is again associated with this holiday. Other um, symbols include rabbits, snakes, one of my personal favorites, um, just baby animals in general, butterflies, birds, seeds, flowers, baskets, again a lot of just like early spring imagery. It's the first day of spring we should celebrate. Now no pagan holiday is complete without a feast, right? So some of the foods I would recommend include um, tons of fresh fruits and veggies. I have been obsessed with eating blackberries for like 
the last couple weeks and I'm having them in a really beautiful salad with like some goat cheese and like a little vinaigrette that's gonna be my Ostara meal. Um, you could also make like deviled eggs and stuff. That is a big thing as well. Um, you might want to include mead or honey if you don't drink alcohol. Um, some pagans do include hot crossed buns because it is believed by some people that um, the crosses on the buns represent the four elements um, rather than the cross of the crucifixion, which I think actually is kind of a unique way to bridge kind of the pagan and Christian um, viewpoint. So if that is something that you are kind of struggling with with your family, maybe that is, um, you know, like, hey, we make hot cross buns too for this holiday. It's not that scary. It could be a point of coming together if that is something you're interested in doing. Now, if that's not for you, other cakes, treats, cookies are totally fine as well. But I generally see like the food foods of Ostara and other like spring holidays as being rather light. I would say like brunch <laughs> or like a tea party. Um, let those things be your inspiration for cooking um, for this holiday. Moving right along, let's talk about herbs and flowers, right? So the biggest thing that I recommend is decorating with delicate florals. Um, maybe herbs that are associated with that element of air, that kind of um, bright light, just really um, aromatic uh, energy of these plants. Uh, things such as lavender, dandelion, hyacinth, cherry blossom, um, the first buds, of you know a plant in your garden or a tree in your garden. Um, I would include baby's breath, uh, crocus, daffodils, wildflowers, pansies, um, any sort of herbs that are purifying as well as herbs that maybe help with your creativity as well. So I encourage you to use that as a prompt to continue your own research. Um, Moving right along, let's talk about some crystals. Uh, the crystals that I would use to celebrate this holiday include citrine, amethyst, sunstone, moss agate, peridot, and rose quartz. Just again, those really kind of like pastel colors. There's some correspondences to kind of get you started. Let's talk about some activities and actionable steps you can take to celebrate this holiday. Um, now, the number one thing I have as your Virgo friend here is to spring clean. Now, this can be something that's a little bit daunting and we're gonna get into some low energy methods um, in the next video, but um, the idea behind spring cleaning at Ostara does really just resonate with me. I, look, I felt like it was really, really cold and it was like kind of hard for me to start cleansing my space, but I did get a lot of clutter out. But with Ostara, I just really feel like it's time to finish up that work, just really get my apartment in order um, and just ready for the springtime ahead, right? So you can definitely use this as a time to spring clean your house, both physically as well as energetically by, um, you know, using smoke cleansing, maybe using some of those herbs um, in a simmer pot. Uh, you could also use a besom or a bell to do some sound cleansing or sweeping away some of that negative energy, um, anything that you feel particularly connected with. But I do highly recommend at least opening up all those windows and letting in some fresh air. Next, after you have spring cleaned your house, I absolutely recommend building an Ostara altar. Stay tuned for hours um, just by adding some of those simple symbols and you know the focusing on some of those spiritual intentions you can really combine those things to create a really beautiful altar um I recommend planting seeds for summer if you haven't been able to, or if you did it on Imok. Um, I planted a few of them, but I did save some for Ostara that I'm going to start. Um, another thing you can do is dyeing eggs, which I know is something that seems really Eastery, but it's a tradition, shall we say, and it's a great way to kind of keep up this Christian tradition um, if you are struggling to find common ground with your family where it's like, hey, like our traditions aren't that different. This is something that we can come together and do as a family. Yours are just less about Christ and more about, you know, celebrating the spring equinox. And hopefully you guys can find just some like, you know, commonality there. But Again, just an idea. If the weather is warm enough, of course, I encourage you to take a nice little nature walk. I'm going to try to get out there myself. Um, this is also a great time of year to start new projects. So maybe um, you're doing some renovations around the house, starting your yard work, your garden, um, or just another project that has been calling to you. Another idea would be to dance around a bonfire or otherwise invite movement into your life. We are really starting to get to the point where the earth is waking up. We might be feeling a little bit more energetic though if you are in the United States and are dealing with daylight savings maybe not we'll give you guys a few days too um, <laughs> but I encourage you guys to really bring movement into your life and start waking up along with the rest of the planet now 
to facilitate this, the final point I have for you guys is to feast. Yes, absolutely treat yourself to something nice. Even if it's just something small, like a nice fresh piece of fruit, I encourage you guys to feast and welcome back the warm weather that is to come. For my friends in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope you guys are getting cozy. Um, thank you guys for joining me today in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.